Hey, Saints fans, welcome back to the channel. Today, I want to talk about, look, I never go back to back on film studies, right? But I feel like we got to take a look at Paul Sadibo again because I said, hey, probably not playing at a all pro level. But you know what? Maybe he is. And I want to talk about this Bears game. Yes, backup quarterback. Yes, not the best receivers in the world. But we're not here to hate on the content. We're here to appreciate what he's doing right that's actually what i want to do in this video now as always comment who that if you enjoy the chats like the video because it does help us and share it out with your other saints fans and then other than that yeah we're just going to get straight on into it popping in the tape right here now if you're not familiar with this process well don't worry we're going to keep you going and keep you locked in a paul sadiba is going to be lined up at the bottom of your screen right down there i'm going to go ahead and get rid of my madden pin momentarily i'm just gonna let it run then we're going to discuss he's playing off in a cover three style look and he's going to play a little bit of a trail gives up a pass early on and uh real key is the depth of this drawback uh, very similar to them running a yankee concept seems like the bears want to run a yankee concept it's dj moore right there and they never were able to get the post out because well, Lattimore is freaking amazing. We're talking about a Debo here, but by the way, Lattimore is still playing at a very high level, and I believe he deserves to get his flowers for that. But a Debo leaves a little bit too much space as he's backing into his back third here. And safety comes underneath. It's actually one of those things where, like, the quarterback, we talk about pulling the trigger. Watch the safety, Honey Badger, right there. Honey Badger had not committed either way. He's already throwing the pass. But, I mean, you get in a first down. But you could have potentially had more in terms of the read. But anyway, Paul Sadivo, even though he's playing back a little bit, has to be a little bit quicker to react so he can get up on that one and not let it get him. Yeah, he just he can't get it to beat a little bit, right? But let's take a look at another play. Again, we're going to kind of go through some good ones. So Paul Sadivo, again, is going to be at the bottom of your screen. Again, a similar look to what we've seen them run before. If you haven't noticed them run these looks before, well... Haven't been really been paying too much of attention because they run this look a lot. They run a C3 look, a Tampa 2 look, and a quarters look are the main things that New Orleans runs. For those that don't know what those are, I'm going to show them in the middle of the screen. Tampa 2 is middle linebacker drops in the middle, and then you have deep safety, deep safety. That's your Tampa 2. Quarters is quarters coverage, four deep coverages, and then cover three is three, especially with New Orleans playing a match system where the corners will tend to match or maybe they'll match number two have a hook defender hook curl defender anyway down here with paul sandibo love how he navigates traffic right here this is hilarious this is one of those where we gave credit to him doing this last week how well he navigates traffic in this mesh concept and the bears receivers themselves do it terrible they run into themselves and cost themselves so adebo attracted well Sadly, the quarterback's able to get out of the pocket and go make a move, but uh, just potential sack right there missed by Malcolm Roach. But it's hilarious that the rub route intended for Adebo and Lattimore, they play it perfectly and the receivers take themselves out. I just think that that was something worth noting. I thought it was kind of funny. All right, next one. I want to talk about recognition speed what do i mean by recognition speed how quickly do you recognize a play react to it and then get in there to make it now he doesn't actually make this play but watch his ability to watch his receiver and understand what's happening this is how you can tell a debo is in the film room now again you have that cover three look with two dbs we're both playing off here we're uh, we're, we're focusing underneath we're gonna let them have it we're gonna not give that deep stuff up but look at this play he reads it, look at his eyes in the backfield, reads the receiver, and look, he's already jetting. He apparently knows something in film study, but he also knows his responsibility to his man. And whether it's the reverse or whatever, he has great integrity in terms of his assignment. Look at this. He's already launching, taking a great angle. Look at the amount of space he's closed. And if this tackle's not made, look, he's there. That's a fantastic read by Paul Sandivo. And this is something that will never show up on a stat sheet. But in terms of what he's doing well, that click and close we talk about a player having, the ability to diagnose, read a play, he sees this immediately. Great 
Great play by Carl Granderson to get the TFL. But it's a fantastic job by Adebo to recognize this, cross the field, and then be in a position to make the play. He's just doing such a good job. I'm going to go to the one that many of you are excited about. This is the big one. He's going to bait him in. He's going to bait him in for an interception. I love how he plays this one. If you haven't already, by the way, check out the merch. Support the channel. The bottom of your screen, New Orleans is going to play a Tampa 2 coverage. So real quick, deep safety, deep safety, middle of the field. This is called the hole in terms of coverage. So Demario Davis has the hole. And then underneath, 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 underneath. Now watch how he plays his zone. I love this by Debo. Bottom of your screen does it so well. So he is sitting in his zone reading the quarterback. But watch what he does when the quarterback, watch the eyes of the quarterback. Quarterback's going to come back around. Now the quarterback came back around. What did he do? He took a slight step as if he was going here. He baited this throw. He showed just enough separation to kind of like halfway be out of the field of vision. For those that don't know, when it comes to quarterback, a lot of them will talk about this. They operate from a concept called color flash. So like when you make that quick head movement, you're not really seeing numbers. Like you don't see DJ Moore, number blah, blah, blah. He's five foot 11. He's right there. You see color flash. So he baits him in. He shows that he's, you know, sitting in the flat and then he comes in, yanks it. This is fantastic. Now, the run back is pretty trash. Sorry, Debo. The, the run back was pretty awful. That You just take the positive yard, stop trying to be a hero. But <laughs> everything else is fantastic. It's a fantastic job to bait a quarterback in an underneath zone. Drew used to get beat by this sometimes, too. So he's reading back here. So you see uh, Baguette. I'm going to call him Baguette. Is reading that backside safety. He's checking his coverages here. He's going to go backside and say, hey, if that's what they're doing, we're going to check back. He's moving. He's now moved to the middle of the field. Sees it close. He's moved right. And again, Adebo has made movement down to that bottom end. Looks like he's out of the play and then comes in, yanks it. Puts himself in a great position to bait the quarterback to make a throw that he can make a play on. Absolutely beautiful job. And when I use the word like pro ball and all pro, I always hold off on using those for a player because for you to truly be an all pro, you got to be able to do stuff like this. Now, I'm not saying he's going to get the reward this year, but I am saying that he's allowing less than a 40 quarterback rating right now, and he's leading the team in interceptions, and he's doing a freaking fantastic job. But that's not the only plays that we need to look at. We need to find more. So let's go give you another play from Adebo. Top of your screen. This one, again, navigating a little bit of a recognition issue here or recognition bonus here. I love what he does. So they're going to show this too deep under alignment. So they're showing in terms of the look. The look is zone, zone, man underneath, like a, a cover to under type of a look here. Watch him read the corner or read the uh, the wide receiver. And then as he's doing this, he's also at the same time, he sees that inside cut. So you can tell now they've actually dropped into a zone or they would have dropped into a zone, uh, but they're playing it with a uh, inside release here. So now he's watching that. Recognize it, get underneath. You always, always, always corners. If you are young in high school or junior high or listening, you want to force the ball back inside. Yes, if you can make the tackle like he does here, fantastic. But you want to work them back in. That's where all your help is. This is great fundamental football. Top of my head is where you're going to see it happen. What I love from Adebo here is he maintains his integrity, recognizes it, gets low, wins the center of gravity battle. So he's closed off this gap. It has to come in here where you have Pete Warner falling down for some reason, Cameron Jordan, but he still sweeps the leg and finds a way to make a play. This is beautiful football. And I'm telling you, if you are a corner watching this and you are that backside gap that you've got to maintain, this is how you want to do it. You control the outside, force it back in, and fight through your block to make this type of a play. This is this is the type of stuff that Adebo has really elevated to become a much better player than what we've seen in the past. All right. 
Let's do another one here, another big play from him that I absolutely loved because the reason I love this play is that it actually starts off a little bit as a negative. He's playing off coverage here in another of those looks that we've seen those C3 looks. And he, he plays a little bit too far off, in my opinion, for playing this number one. So what happens is, is they run into a stack alignment. And anytime you have a stack where you have a one and a two here, so you're going to have that hook curl defender and you have different responsibilities. You know, somebody might have the responsibility to carry the number two vertical or it passes on to the, you know, in this case, the field side corner might need to carry the vertical, especially in cover three. So he's going to backpedal to give himself space. I think he gives himself a little too much space because it does open up this route, but that's okay. So now it's underneath. Here's the thing. First person contact, second person's job. Defense, if you are listening and you play defense at any level, first person's job is to tackle. Second person's job is to attack the football. First person tackles the player. Second person attacks the ball. Punch it. Love it. Great freaking football. Woo. God, I get excited with the way this man is playing football right now. I'm not trying to make 30-minute film studies. I'm trying to show you how Debo is elevated. So even though I feel like he takes a little bit too far in his drawback here in this back coverage, because I know he's worried about the vertical, you do have to respect the vertical there. First person tackle, soon as Honey Badger's got the tackle, what do we do? Punch it. Roll it back one more time. Again, you're worried about the vertical. So you notice here that when they were out there, he was impressed. Now, because you don't know the vertical in cover three, as the boundary corner in the field side corner, you've got to carry the vertical. That's what it's called. Since you're not sure which it is, he's now gotten into an off coverage. He's going to allow Lante Taylor to press. And he gave himself a little bit too much space. I, I would have preferred him to be maybe right around here, give him a better angle. But it doesn't matter because what happened? Great reaction time by Honey Badger and then punch it out. Just fantastic fundamental football playing ladies and gentlemen i just absolutely love it i just whoo all right now because i've given some hype i've got to give you a negative because we don't do highlight over here it's not always perfect let's take a look so in this one if there's probably one trait that i would say adebo doesn't have is he doesn't have elite recovery speed so when we say recovery speed we mean the ability to close the space that gets created what happens here is that the line is going to get sold on an outside jab real quick. And that flattens his feet just enough to create the separation. And it does a great job to navigate through traffic, but it creates about two or three yards. He gives up this pass and it's on him alone. And if there is a trait that he doesn't have that I would call as an elite trait, it's recovery speed. So he has really good speed, but if you beat him, you beat him. And he typically isn't going to recover from that you see he's a little bit far behind here. So he's got to make sure that he wins at the line of scrimmage. Now, this isn't a horrible rep. Doesn't give up a huge touchdown. And crossing patterns are notoriously hard to defend. That's actually why I wish the New Orleans Saints offense would run them more often. But it's still a great play to stay with your man, get in trail technique, and go help make the tackle. But it just comes down to that little bit of sell. So you watch the receiver top of your screen. I just want you to watch the shoulder shimmy. And what he does, he's just going to try to attack that outside shoulder just enough to get him flat-footed right there. And honestly, for a sell, I think Adebo just is worried too much about outside leverage here. I think Adebo is worried because he knows that they're kind of almost doing a little buzz down here. So he knows that he's alone in this back end. So he's naturally trying to defend that boundary. Now, I think that's exactly what ends up happening because... The look pre-snap here is cover two, but actually it could be cover six. But here's the thing. At post-snap, they're going to buzz down, which would be like a cover three buzz uh, or, you know, even just a buzz defender is a safety that comes down to attack the hole for a pass. So maybe he is selling that outside leverage, making sure that he doesn't get beat that way. But he does bite on this little move a little bit more than I expect gets caught flat-footed, and gets beat. It's not a horrible play. It's not really that big of a deal. I'm not harping on it, but I had to give you an example of a loss because we do not do highlight tapes over here, ladies and gentlemen. I hate 
highlight tapes. I don't like that. I don't feel like you learn from highlight tapes because he can learn from this rep, right? All right, moving on to the next. We have another quarters alignment, and this is going to be another zone play, and I love how he plays this. Now, real quick, he's at the top of your screen. Number one, note the communication. He's calling out the potential area here because in quarters, you've got these soft underneath zones, but you also have the hole that you got to watch out for. So watch for the post. We got we to watch for that post route. Now watch him watch. Now his eyes are on the quarterback while he's trying to direct his team into the position that they need to be in to get the best coverage that they can be in, right? I think he's doing a pretty solid job right now. So what he ends up finding is it's a corner route. So great job by the safety to recognize. Now he has to recover and go make a play. You always defend top to bottom. You don't want to give up a touchdown. You'd much rather give up this underneath. So as soon as this happens, break it. You rely on your underneath guy to go cover that guy in the flats. You, even though it's at the bottom of his quarter zone, which would be about right here, ignore it. You cover high to low. And then great job recognizing it and then getting up and making a play. And so many people are like, oh, get your head around, make an interception. No, break up the pass. If you can get an interception, fantastic. This is just a great read of the quarterback. Go up, find a football, incomplete. This is a beautiful job. Honey Badger does a great job to recognize as well, but Adebo particularly closes the gap and gets right into the arms. I love Adebo because when you see Adebo attack, he's always attacking the elbows and the wrists of the wide receiver. And that is good corner back play. I absolutely love it. All right, one more. I'm going to give you one more. If y'all aren't excited about how Adebo's been playing these past couple games, well, heck, I don't, I don't honestly don't know what to tell you. So we're going to be a little bit of a trail technique here, bottom of your screen. Watch Adebo. Great job using the outside as leverage and just does a fantastic job, in my opinion, to ride this up. It doesn't end up going to him, but I still love it. Press outside. He's delayed the route. He's using the sideline to his advantage. And look at that. He's hip to hip. He's got him locked. And you're not throwing that way, especially after a couple picks have come his way. Just like, ah, ooh, I love it. I love it. I'm telling you, this man is playing so well right now. I'm not saying that he is like the best corner on the team, but man, he is playing so well. And I didn't even show y'all the second interception where he was in a trail technique across because y'all honestly y'all have seen that this is not a highlight film this is a what's his technique look like what is he doing on field on tape and well i hope that this video is giving you a little bit of clarity on some of those things ladies and gentlemen here let me put myself back up on the screen right there hope this is giving you some of the clarity of what you're seeing i think what you're seeing is a fantastic player who is playing at a very high level and is playing much better than many anticipated. I know there were some grumblings about Alante Taylor not being the starter outside of Lattimore. And no offense, Alante Taylor's having a good year on his own right. But let me know what you think of Paulson Debo in the comment section down below. Who that? God bless. I'm going to catch you on the next film study, which is, uh, if y'all aren't familiar, is at least twice a week. And the Who Dat Confessional Podcast. Deuces, that's me. We outie. Bye.